Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's just go over Aqueduct, just the overview, and let's just talk about the sample application that we have when we Aqueduct create our application, all right? And so we'll just go over this just to kind of get it out of the way, and then we'll go more into the details on some of these features and aspects, all right? So most of the part at main.dart, most of this is just part of standard Dart IO. Okay, so if we go down, we notice we imported package aqueduct server right here, and this is just an export of Dart IO. So most of this is just Dart IO. Here we could see the uh, platform number of instances. So we don't really need to know what that is. Uh, that's if you have a server and you have massive numbers of users, massive threads. It's just a huge system itself. This is actually going to be very important in order to know how to utilize the resources of your server. For us, since this is going to be super basic, none of this is going to make a difference. So I'm not going to go into too much details for that. We still got to get the basics down before we go into more of the details and how to optimize applications. And um, right over here, we have application aqueduct server app channel. Okay, so it's an application channel, right? So we know that we'll go over that in a couple of seconds here. And then we can see that there's configuration path config.yaml. So one of the options here is that you can go to config.yaml right here. It's empty, but we can notice that, okay, now we have an idea that we can actually configure the application through main.dart. Okay, so we can make some of the configurations. One of the options, it's the port. So at 8888, Okay, so now if I ever want to change the port, I can just change it from there. All right, so things to keep in mind just in the front page. Nothing, not a lot of detail, just keep that in mind. All right, then we go to channel.dart. And like I said before, this is the central part of it. this is the most important part that gives us the information. So we notice a class right here, and it extends application channel. So application channel is going to be a abstract class, most likely, and we're going to extend it and utilize the classes in that fashion and instantiate the classes. Well, actually, we don't instantiate the class. We just utilize them, instantiate right there, and let it and it runs by itself. Okay. So application channel, we know what that is, right? It's the um, if you have aqueduct.io docs and everything beyond that is going to be the application channel. It's just a stream of a bunch of channels um, that go through. Okay. Okay. A stream of controllers, uh, not a stream, a, a series of controllers that create the application. And here we have the future prepared. This is the logger, the logging itself. I think we, we went through that at override. We've gone through that with flutter with other videos before, just in case you're not familiar. Um, override is used when you use a um, uh, abstract class and you're instantiating something. I'm sorry, extending something, excuse me. When you extend something, when you re define or restate these methods themselves at override is a, a what we call metadata it just helps you out if there is an error like for example if you said override dot this or something like that it would give you a little clue and say well wait a minute wait a minute um there is no pf repairy um there is no method like that in application channel therefore there's a problem I really want to get rid of those. Those drive me crazy. So therefore, you probably made some error there, and that's where the override would actually help you out. Okay, so it's not necessary for the program to run. It's necessary for you to, to be able to debug your programs in the future. So we have another um, override, and we have a controller. Remember, application channel is a series of controllers, and here is the entry point. Okay, so we get an entry point. Remember, we have the client. It sends a request over to the server. We're right here. And then it goes into the entry point. And where it goes through is we have to instantiate a router. Now, what's the router? Okay, so the router, remember, you send a request. It sends here, activates an entry point, And the route is the location of where the entry point actually is. Well, I'm sorry, where the request goes, right? And it creates a route object. So the router object goes to the route slash example. Remember, like we said before, aqueduct.io slash docs, the docs is going to be the route 
and the router will be the thing that the object that takes over from there. So this would be the router would be localhost 8888 slash example. That's the route for the router, right? But the router, once you send information over to the router to the location of the route, then you want to do something, right? You want to either send a response back or you want to send some information to another controller or go from there. Here we're going to say return a link function. Okay, you can use link, link function. We'll go over more of that in the details. But for this particular example, we'll say link function and then res return a response it itself. So send um, uh, request sends a response back and response dot okay hi there again we'll go over the responses in the future and this is going to be a um boy i already forgot what that's called it's uh it's i really uh like a closure i can't really remember so when we return the function return the response we return it back to the object itself um that's on the tip of my tongue we return it to the object itself not to the method so once we return it to the object, then we got to return the router object to the method itself. So when then you send the response, it'll return the router, okay? And the object, the function of the router will be link function. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Um, I'll get this, I'll get this. I'll, I'll put it in the, the description if I can figure that out, what, what, what that's called. Um, okay, good. And then now we have to look at our Dart code itself. So the client, right? So client... By the way, you have to use this part. I, what I did was just say um, stagehand web de, web slash web dash simple, and it creates this and the new body I put here. So apparently, this metadata right here is essential on the head and on the header. <clears throat> on the head, excuse me. And so I have these values and main.dart right here. But main.dart, what it does is there is a response, okay? So the response, basically, it'll say response. It will send an HTTP request, right? Automatically, it'll send, by the way, this, this is unnecessary. I don't know why I have that. It will send a request over to the server, get the string that is the response, and send it back, and that's gonna be a string, and it's gonna equal respond. So that's going to happen automatically. And then if I hit on click dot listen, then it's going to be text dot respond. If not, then it's going to, if I click the something button, it's going to make it nothing. Submit. Hi there. Something. It goes away. Okay. So this is not, um, very dynamic or anything like that. All it is is it automatically sends a request over and then it gets a response back without me doing anything else. So we're gonna get a little bit more complicated, but that's the idea of the client, save, and how it interacts with the server. But let's go into more detail about the server in the future videos and more detail about the client as well and how to use it. Thanks.